They're the photos which changed Deborah and Lee Dalbert's life. Scans which at first seemed to show a healthy baby, then brought their world crashing down. Their story and that of baby Milo crystallises just how unflinching America's new abortion laws can be. And then this one is exactly at week 23. And this is when they discovered there was no kidneys. When Deborah was 23 weeks pregnant, a doctor diagnosed their unborn child with Potter syndrome, a rare and lethal condition. He told us either the baby will be stillborn or when it's born, um, it'll only live for a few minutes to a few hours. In Florida, where they live, abortion is banned after 15 weeks. There are exceptions for fatal fetal abnormalities, but Deborah's doctors wouldn't honour the couple's wishes to end the pregnancy. How were those months, Deborah, when you had to carry a baby to term that you knew wasn't going to survive? It was like a roller coaster. And when I felt, you know, um, baby M kicking me, it's like, I wanted to feel joy, but at the same time, it was just like I fought back because I knew what was about to happen, that I was going to lose him. For more than three months, Deborah carried a baby she knew wouldn't survive. Trying to hide her tears from four-year-old son, Caden. After a 12-hour labour, baby Milo was eventually born. He lived just 93 minutes. Babies usually immediately start crying and it was just silence. But he's just opening his mouth periodically and it's, he's just trying to, you know, just trying to breathe. Is there a sense of disbelief that these laws exist at the moment? Yeah, there is. I, I've never, never thought in a million years I would be the one in this position. I feel like we've gone back backwards 50 years. It was a year ago that a Supreme Court decision fractured this country's abortion laws down state lines. The constitutional right to choose, which had stood for half a century, was ripped up. Now your reproductive rights depend on where you live and how much money you have. It's also become a hot button political issue. In Florida, the governor, Ron DeSantis, is a leading contender for the presidency in 2024. We have protected the rights of parents. We have respected our taxpayers and we reject woke ideology. He's known for his right wing views and is the face of the state's six week abortion ban, currently held up by legal challenges. I travel from Florida to Tennessee to investigate how one of the strictest abortion bans in the country is affecting women there. Women like Mayra and Hollis, for whom there is little alone time, days are spent working at a factory and evenings with her young family. Cheese. Last February, she and husband Chris welcomed daughter Zoe. Five months later, Mayra was pregnant again. They now have baby Elena it almost cost Mayron her life. It was terrifying, I didn't, it just didn't seem real at first, like it was an out of body feeling. Mayron was told early on the embryo had implanted in scar tissue from a previous cesarean section. At any point, a doctor warned, the pregnancy could rupture and blow open her uterus. But a new trigger ban in Tennessee meant no doctor there would perform the procedure, despite the risk to her life. Mayron was effectively forced to continue with a pregnancy which could have killed her. And just over six months later, it nearly did. So I stood up to go to the bathroom and it was, I was just gushing blood at this time. Like it was horrible. Like I had a white rug in front of my door, just blood everywhere. There was nothing they were going to do for me unless I was on the verge of dying. Elena was born three months premature and miraculously survived but Mayron had to have an emergency hysterectomy to save her life. It means she won't be able to carry a child in the future. How does it feel, Mayron, to have that decision taken out of your hands? Oh, it was horrible. They took away the choice of my family, my sanity. Baby Elena spent the first week of her life in intensive care. Her long-term health is uncertain. I'm blessed because 
I'm here, you know, she's here. Um, I feel sad because I didn't feel like, I don't feel like I had help. Like, I felt like I was alone during my pregnancy. I felt obviously scared, terif terrified. Um, I would never want to go through that again. The hospital which treated Mayron won't comment, but one of her doctors does agree to speak to me in a personal capacity. We have a law in Tennessee that has really made it impossible for me to fully, to fulfill my duties as a physician um, and to honor pa patients' choices when they're faced with incredibly difficult decisions. Anti-abortion campaigners would point to Mayron's case and say, it's a victory, she survived, her baby survived. Do you see it as a, a victory? We are so happy that she has a live baby, but that could have gone wrong in so many ways. And even now, like her, you know, her baby is not out of the woods for a long time. So, you know, I, it, it's a, a small victory in that she didn't die, but I think that's a very low bar <laughs> to set. When Roe versus Wade was overturned a year ago, many so-called trigger bans came into force banning abortion outright. In Tennessee, Senator Richard Briggs co-sponsored their trigger ban, but now admits he never thought it would actually come into effect. Do you regret signing the Right to Life bill? You know, I really don't regret signing it because uh, we, we don't need to be terminating pregnancies on normal children, and I know there's unusual circumstances. Uh, and I don't regret, I don't regret signing it. Uh, maybe we should have had more discussion. Senator, I've spoken to a woman who nearly bled to death twice. Mm -hmm. if, the, if the woman had a condition where her life or health was in jeopardy, she, sh she should have been able to be treated. In but she Tennessee. wasn't. She wasn't well, because, was doctors, because doctors in this state uh, were too scared to they, give her abortion health care. So she nearly bled to death twice because of the law yeah, that you co-sponsored. That, that, do you, well, do you apologise to her? That was a bad aspect of the law. Were you playing chicken with the lives of women in Tennessee? Uh, well, I, I don't think so. That's, I think that's a very legitimate question, uh, by the way. And you'll hear a lot of people say, we didn't think that Roe versus Wade would be ever overturned. And then the second part of that is, it's like a lot of bills. We come back and revise the bill, and that's exactly what we did in this case. Tennessee's abortion law does now allow doctors to perform an abortion if the life of the mother is at risk. But it remains one of the most severe in the country. It's a postcode lottery for care here, and the restrictions hit the poorest hardest. While politicians across America discuss and debate reproductive rights, the women who are stripped of their right to choose reckon with a new reality. Martha Kellner, Sky News, Tennessee.